your Bibles this morning, and if, I hope you do. If you don't, there's one in the pew rack in front of you. If you would join me in Haggai chapter 2, Haggai chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. Now, I'm going to give you a minute to get there, because Haggai is not one of the books that we normally go to. But with Huffman Baptist Church's commitment to Bible drill in the past, probably most of you are already there. Haggai chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. In the seventh month, on the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Speak now to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jehozadak the high priest, and to all the remnant of the people, and say, Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Is it not as nothing in your eyes? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts. According to the covenant that I made with you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit remains in your midst. Fear not. For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once more, in a little while... I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations so that the treasures of all the nations shall come in. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace declares the Lord of hosts. Let me set the stage for what's been going on. We've been in Haggai for the last three weeks. So those of you who've been here every week, you kind of have followed along and you know where we are in the way that all of this is kind of unfolding. Israel had come back from the exile and they had begun work on rebuilding the temple. And then work stopped. And about three decades later, God placed his hand upon a man by the name of Haggai and sent him to speak a word from the Lord, to speak to Zerubbabel, to speak to Joshua, to speak to the remnant of the people, and to encourage them to return to the work of finishing the temple. It's one of those incredible things. Uh, Haggai spoke the word of the Lord to the people, and in three weeks they got busy. Now, I've never had a church respond that quickly to anything. But in just three weeks, they were like, yeah, let's get after it. And so they got up and they got started doing the work, and there came a point where they looked around and they said, why are we doing this? There's no way we can match what was here before. We don't have the resources, we don't have the energy. There's no way we can match Solomon's temple, so we'll just quit. And that's when Haggai came and spoke this word that we just read a moment ago. And I love the way that he does this. He speaks to them and he says, Who among you remembers the, latter, the former glory of this place? Now, if we were to ask that question in here this morning, there'd be a lot of people who would raise their hands and go, I remember. It's what we were doing downstairs, isn't it? It's what some of us were doing while the choir was singing this morning. I remember. Oh, I remember and I wish. We have started the work of rebuilding the house of the Lord here. Not the physical house, although there's some physical things that need to be done by, you know, we just noticed that when we walk in, the air conditioner's not working. It's what you get with an old building, right? Something's always going to be broken. So there's work to be done there, but we have started the work of rebuilding the actual house of the Lord, the, the family of God, the church that is gathered here at 700 Huffman Road. And while we celebrate the former glory of what God has done, oh, let me tell you, let me tell you, I love y'all, and I love y'all for being here this morning. I love you for being a part of our past, and there are ways that you may can be a part of our future as well. We'll talk about that before the day's over. But the past is the past. And God's glory in this place 
for this generation at this time is what we are focused on laser 100%. You're going to get to see some things this morning that you're going to go, wow, I've heard something about this, but I had no idea. I had no idea what God was actually up to. Some of you may have at different times this morning, maybe downstairs or maybe when you walked in and you thought, man, I wish, they, I, wish they could, I wish they could do what they, what they used to do. I, I wish the church, and maybe you feel a little sorry for us. Don't. Don't. We wouldn't go back if we could. We have no desire to recreate the former glory of this place. As great as it was. And look, when I was growing up, I came to Birmingham. I had cousins who lived in Roebuck, just right across the interstate in the South Roebuck neighborhood. So this is where we came when we came to visit Birmingham. And so I know about the history of this church, and I know about the amazing things this church has done down through the years. But I'm telling you, God's got more amazing things to do in the future. Amen. We long for the latter glory of this place. And when we say that the latter glory of this place will exceed the former glory, we're not putting the former glory down one little bit. We're just saying we want to be faithful to do what God has called us to do at this particular moment in time. The work of reclaiming God's glory has started. And God's remnant is committed to the task. Change or die. Change or die. My mother heard those words from her doctor. Change or die. Now you have to understand, my mother was a smoker for her entire adult life. And in her later years, she developed some lung issues, and so she would go to the doctor, and the doctor would say, Miss Bobby, you've got to put down the cigarettes. And she would go home, and she would try, but the, the addiction to that nicotine was so strong that after a few weeks sometimes even a few days, probably sometimes even a few hours, she would pick them back up again and she would go for it. She'd go back to the doctor and they'd just repeat that cycle over and over and over again. And finally her doctor looked at her and said, Miss Bobby, I'm telling you, if you don't quit smoking, you're going to die. I think he probably also put a timeline on that. Like, I don't remember if it was three months, six months, a year, but whatever it was, it was enough it got her attention. And when the pain of imminent death outweighed the pain of change, she changed. Huffman Baptist Church had reached that tipping point, change or die, somewhere around 2018, 2019. The leadership of this church realized that if we don't do something, the last person out will be able to turn out the lights and close the doors, and it'll all be over. Can I tell you that there is nothing that glorifies God about a dying church? Nothing. I mean, when we say that we serve the risen Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, when we talk about His power, what a powerful name it is, and yet we can't even allow the church to do what God called the church to do? What does that say to a world that looks at the church and goes, Oh, bless their hearts. They meant well. We are, we are committed to the task that God has placed before us. It's not going to look the same as it's always looked. But we are committed to becoming a neighborhood church for Northeast Birmingham that is sending transformed people to make Jesus known across the street, literally, and around the world. That, that is, that's, that's who we are. It is what we are about it is where we are, and it is where we are going. We are committed to the mission. We are unified around the mission. Like Zerubbabel and Joshua and the remnant of the people, we have heard the word of the Lord. Be strong. Get to work. Fear not. I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts. God's remnant is committed to the task because God's purpose to make his name glorious has not changed. When Huffman Baptist Church was founded in this location, 
actually I think back here, 114 years ago, the people who started this church started this church to be a gospel lighthouse for the people who were moving into this area. It's hard for us to imagine that 114 years ago, this was farmland and, and forest, and people were moving in, mostly coming from St. Clair County. Isn't it, isn't it interesting now we're all moving to St. Clair County? <laughs> Crazy. But they started this church to be a gospel lighthouse for this community. They, they understood what we also understand, that Jesus said, you are the light of the world. So, if you're the light of the world, what are we to do? We are to let our light shine before men. So that they may see our good works and give glory to the Father. We're the light of the world. So the idea is that people are to look at us and they are to be encouraged to look up to Jesus and to turn their lives to him. And so that, that's, the, that's the task. That's the mission. God's mission has not changed. Nor has God's commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That is the first and the greatest commandment. The second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I love, I love the, the passage where Jesus quotes that and smart aleck in the crowd asks the question, who's my neighbor? Basically, he's trying to say, who, who do I have to be loving towards? Who do I have to pay attention to? And Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. It's not who is your neighbor, it's whose neighbor are you? And so the art of neighboring, the art of loving the people that God brings alongside you, the art of loving people who live across the street, God's commandment has not changed. Amen. Notice that's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. God's commission has not changed. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. God's presence, God's power, God's resources are available to us when we are about the work he's given us to do. Not when we're about our agenda, not when we're about doing what we want to do. We are, we, God's, God pours everything out upon us when we are committed to doing what he's called us to do. Letting our light shine. Loving him and loving our neighbors. Sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Making disciples who make disciples that result in the community around you becoming noticeably better. How good is that? How incredible is that? That's what God's called us to do. So not only is God's remnant committed to that task, and not only are God's, has God's purpose not changed, but God's timing is perfect. Amen. It's interesting. Two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen, 2018, early 2019, somewhere in that time period is when the church finally quit having the discussion, do we move or do we stay? Now, I'm not being critical, but y'all know for 10 years that was the conversation. Are we going to stay here or are we going to go somewhere else? Are we going to stay here or are we going to go somewhere else? Are we... Two different pastors convened two different committees to study the exact same question. You know what happens when you're asking the question, do we leave or do we stay? Well, let me tell you what doesn't happen. You're not ministering where you are. Not in the way you should. I'm, I, again, please hear my heart. I'm not being critical. I'm talking about the perfectness of God's timing. Because when that final decision was made, we're staying here. And I fully believe that a lot of folks who made that decision really had no idea what that meant. But they knew that's what was supposed to happen. And so the decision was made, we're staying here. In that process, God began doing a work in my heart and preparing me 
actually, we decided we're moving back to Birmingham to be close to these folks right here, our daughter and son-in-law, actually to be close to their children that are <laughs> in the children's building. And my pastor at Shades Mountain Baptist Church knew we were moving back to Birmingham and he had a connection with the search committee here and he said that he was called and asked, do you know anybody who will come into our situation and do what we need to have done? He said, actually I do, but I need to make a phone call. So he reached out to me, he said, Rob, are you interested? I said, not really. But I'll pray about it. And I said, Danny, if you feel led to share my information with the search committee, we'll just see what the Lord does with it. God's timing is perfect. At any other point in the history of this church, in fact, I, I shared this, some of you may have been on a previous search committee in which my name was also made available to you, and someone said, man, if we'd called him then, we wouldn't be where we are now. You're right, you wouldn't. It would have been way worse. Way worse. Because I had some things I needed to learn about stepping into a, a non-traditional kind of situation, a revitalization effort. I wasn't ready then. I was ready in 2019. God's timing is absolutely perfect. So shortly after I get here, I'm walking around the building. I'm looking around. I'm going, man... <laughs> what do you do with all of this? You got, a, you got a campus that was built to hold 1,500 people, and we got, at that time, maybe 200 people that if they all showed up at one time, it'd be 200. And yet we got all of this space. The children's building was completely shut down. The second and third floors of the original education building completely shut down. And I'm walking the building, and I'm praying. I said, Lord... This, this is an albatross. This is a liability. We're not using it, but we still have to keep it up. Lord, what do we do with this? And God said, change it from a liability to an asset. Use it as a blessing. No, you're not going to fill up Sunday school classes on Sunday morning. Not anytime soon. But how can you use what is here, leverage that for the sake of the gospel in making a difference, in making Jesus known across the street and around the world. I said, okay, Lord, what does that look like? Partnerships. Why not enter into some partnerships with some other ministries that are focused on doing work in Northeast Birmingham? They need a place. You need a hand in the community. It's a beautiful idea. And so in our vision in 2020, January of 2020, our next chapter vision. Which, by the way, if you've not seen it, you can go to our website. There's a, uh, it's actually part of the main menu. Click on it, read it. It'll give you something to pray about for us, pray for us about. But in 2020, God laid on my heart that by 2025, we needed to be working with five different ministries that were focused on work in Northeast Birmingham. I had no clue what that meant. I just knew partnerships, we got space, they can help in the community, we can help them, we can work together, it'll be a beautiful thing. January of 2020, what happened three months later? COVID, welcome to the neighborhood. Welcome. But here's what we did, rather than looking at COVID as uh, an obstacle or a problem, we looked at it as an opportunity. We couldn't gather inside the walls, and so we got outside the walls. We got into the community. We got into the neighborhood. We began serving our neighbors. It was an opportunity. So coming out of COVID, as we began to think about the future, you know, again, God's timing is perfect. We were looking for a worship pastor. This guy right here had just become available as a worship pastor. Chris Crane hooked us up. One phone call, boom. Y'all, I can tell you the things that have happened over the last three years that have happened like that in a Baptist church, nothing good happens quickly in a Baptist church. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. There have been so many things that have happened so quickly over the last two to three years that you just sit back and you go, okay, God, I'm along for the ride. 
I, that's it. I'm along for the ride. People ask, how's it going to Huffman? I said, it's going great. What are y'all doing? I said, I have no clue. <laughs> We're not really doing anything. God's doing a lot. God's timing is perfect. Talked to Richard. I said, look, we don't know our worship voice. We're still learning it. We're still, we're, 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 we need to figure out what it, what it means so that everyone in the room, regardless of their cultural background, at least at some point in the service, is able to cut loose and worship in their heart voice. Maybe not on every song, but at least once. And he's come in and fulfilled that role beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. God's timing is perfect. This past fall... I knew that Pat Ray was getting ready to retire as administrator. Faye was getting to retire as the um, financial secretary. And I'm thinking, we're going to have some administrative stuff that needs to be done, and I don't want to do it. And so God had brought someone across my path by the name of Bill Sears. Bill is a former executive pastor at some really large churches. He had moved back to Birmingham for roughly the same reason that we were moving back to Birmingham, grandkids. And just one day, we were at a meeting at the BMBA, and I said, Bill, would you consider coming and helping us at Huffman for a little while? He said, what do you want me to do? I said, I really don't know. How long do you want me to be there? I really don't know. Bill came in an interim capacity as our executive pastor back in January. And I remember one day, it was a day that the attendance was just really bad low. It was freezing cold outside. The heat wasn't working. Imagine that. Attendance was awful. And the next day, we walk into the office, and Bill looks at me and says, what excites you about this place? He had a conversation with God shortly after that, and God said, I told you to be where you are for a season, and I determine what the season is. Now, God's timing is perfect. Because in the midst of all of that, God was beginning to bring about some conversations with these guys sitting here on the front row that you're going to get to hear about in just a few minutes. And I can tell you, when this church made a commitment back in December, actually a little bit before December, that we were going to do whatever it took to reach the next generation that lives in our neighborhood. As y'all know, you've been around for a while. Huffman has been a diverse church for a long time. We've done a pretty good job, a decent job, of reaching people who live in the community who are my age and older. But in the last couple of decades, we have lost the younger generation, generations. In fact, somebody told me that if it weren't for Jack and Halloween, we would not be a multi-generational church. <laughs> we, we need to become multi-generational on the other end of the spectrum. So we made a commitment. We're gonna, we're gonna, we don't know what this means, but we're going to do everything we can to reach the next generation in this community. That's what we want to do. And as soon as the church made that commitment, God began to do some incredible things that you're going to get to hear about in just a moment. And I'm going to ask our ministry partners if y'all will come to the platform. But while they're walking to the platform, let's take a moment and look at this video about the past, the distant past, in the more recent past, and a little bit of the present. Huffman Baptist Past is highlighted by godly men and women who believed a gospel-centered church should reside at 700 Huffman Road. They form ministries that reach their community for Jesus. Today, that same church exists as a neighborhood church for Northeast Birmingham. We humbly strive to care for our community as we share Jesus across the street and around the world.
Over the past few years, our people have refreshed their commitment to advance the gospel without hindrance. Recently, God has blessed us with some new ministry partners. Elevate Birmingham, an organization that builds long-term, life-changing relationships with urban youth, equipping them to thrive and contribute to their community. Urban Young Life, Birmingham East, helping students grow in their relationship with Jesus, graduate high school with a plan for the future, commit to the priority of marriage before parenthood, and lovingly respecting themselves and others. Banks Academy, an accredited private Christian high school serving students in Northeast Birmingham, training them in mind, body, and spirit through a challenging curriculum work-study programs, excellent teachers, athletic programs, and school clubs. Many students have been introduced to Jesus through Banks Academy. Now, our partners are coming alongside Huffman Baptist as we seek to gather, grow, and go into our community, into our city, into our world. All right, other than that, not much is happening around here. So I'm joined here on the platform by Dr. Kathy Trimble, who is the principal of Banks Academy, Cedric Moore, who is the executive director of Urban Young Life Birmingham East, and Danny Brister, Jr., who is the executive director of Elevate Birmingham. Um, I've asked, I, I gave them the questions I was going to ask, but I, I wanted, let's, let's start, and this could be light or it could be heavy. <laughs> Cedric told me, so I don't have anything light. Tell us, tell us one thing about yourselves that is interesting or we might not anticipate. I'll go first. I am a licensed forklift driver. You didn't see that coming. Okay. I am a choir director and I cannot sing a lick. <laughs> see the importance of it being light. Um, I worked several jobs before I got into ministry. That's about as good as I got right there. But, well, you, you did say one more. I graduated from Auburn. There you go. War Eagle. I ran a marathon for my 30th birthday in weather like today. It, it, it felt like that. I, 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 I thought you were smarter than that. <laughs> so all of this has come together in a really, really quick time frame. Danny was walking the halls one day in the E building, the original education building, actually looking for space because you were expanding your staff. You and I bumped into each other and you made a passing comment that, man, this place is huge, you could put a school in here. Bill, the first time he and I were walking the building, made the same statement. But then the few days later, you and Bill ran into each other on the second or third floor, and you made the same statement. And Bill's comment, I think, was set up a meeting. The next week, a conversation in your office, have you set up a meeting yet? And by the set up a meeting, was he, he made the statement that Banks Academy was looking for space. I left that part out. So the first meeting with you guys, Dr. Trimble, was on a Thursday? It was a Thursday. Thirteen days later, our leadership council was signing a memorandum of understanding, a partnership agreement to bring Banks Academy onto our campus. Again, nothing happens that quickly in a Baptist church that's good. So how do y'all see God's hand in bringing together what we sense God is doing with all of us? Um, I think traditionally what we've seen in, in ministry, even with churches, is churches want to kind of do their own thing. They want everything to kind of fall under the auspice of their organization. And so it can kind of, it can limit what that church is able to do because they're limited to their resources or the people that they may have to help do that. 
And so what I see God is doing is he's building his kingdom and bringing organizations and people together that are like-minded and have that same heart of really engaging and reaching the people of his community. And he's uniting them together, um, even though they may come with different organizations and have different missions, but the heartbeat is the same. Uh, because what I do, uh, Cedric does his job much better than I can do it. Dr. Trimble is amazing at what she does and is the person to lead banks at this season. So we're all, we all play a role in that. And I see God as uniting like-minded people with the same spirit and same heart together. I feel like he summed everything up. <laughs> you know, that that sounds like a closing, not an opener. But, uh, <laughs> um, I think that's what we all have in common is God's kingdom. Um, I'm so excited to serve teenagers. I wake up like, this is so much fun. I love all the drama and everything else that come with it. I just, <laughs> I just like, yes, come sit down. And what else happened? Tell me more. And like, I understand that my spot in the kingdom for this season that I'm in is teenagers. Middle school, high school, I was sitting there talking with Danny's daughter. I was like, this sounds cool to me. What else happened? What do you like about this place? And like, I am curious to understand what it's like to be in their shoes. And they should feel that when you talk to them. I, I can stand up on the stage and talk about it all day long. Because when I get around teenagers, they're like, you actually care? Yes. What else is going on? Who else do you like? And what else? How is it at home? To show up with this level of curiosity to say that you matter when other people feel like you are so far gone. I get excited about it. Like, I love it. Like, just tell me more. And then to see that that God has a space in the kingdom of God to say that these people matter. Because I don't really see them as teenagers. They are people of God. <laughs> Whether they know him or not, they will. Because somebody's willing to inconvenience themselves to pour into them. And so my spot has been there. And I'm like, hey, if you mean to tell me I can bring my teenagers here and we can not only have fun, but love about the, learn more about the Lord? And then most importantly, we say this a lot, and it's safe. Sign me up. First of all, I want to say thank you all. Thank you guys so much. Um, when I looked at this and I thought about it, I was looking at all four of these, which is a partnership that we said. You have banks, which is B. Young Life, which is for life. H, which is up for that, is an elevator. When I look at that as an activator, I thought that it's by he. And who is he? Him. This is done by him. So I thank God that he put us together. Then secondly, I thank you guys for not seeing this as an invasion, but as an invitation so that we all can expand. So it's an invasion, but an invitation for expansion of all three of us together. Wow. The, the invasion comes in August. <laughs> So just, just so you know, Elevate this past year primarily has worked at Huffman High School. We'll be expanding to Winona in the fall. Cedric works primarily at Woodlawn, Restoration Academy, Banks Academy, Putnam Middle School. Putnam Middle School. And then, so you've got two organizations that are going into the public schools and sharing the gospel. Then you've got a private school that is an alternative that is also sharing the gospel. And so I look at this, and, and one, of the, one of the frustrations that churches like Huffman have is how do we get into the schools? How do we get into the lives of people who live in the community? And God just said, I'm already doing it. And I love the conversation. My first meeting with Danny back in January, I was actually trying to poach him to come on our staff. And um, he knew that and he resisted it. He was wise. And um, he made a statement, though. He said, I'm already on your team. And it went click. Yep. And that's really the birth of what we see here, of us working together. And I love the way that you stated it Wednesday night when we were over uh, 
the pictures you saw at the end of the video was from Wednesday night. We had, what, 110 or so kids, 30 adults uh, from their organizations, from, from the church, gathered over at the ministry center, which I used to know as the rec center, the ministry center upstairs for a night of worship. And, and I love the way that Danny introduced, he said, we are Elevate, and I'm, I won't get it right, you can, you can, you might not remember exactly what you said yourself, but we are Elevate, Young Life, Banks, and Huffman Baptist Church, and we are together wanting to love on you guys, something, something to, that, to that effect. Y'all pretty much already answered all my questions. So, you, 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 when, you were, when you were talking uh, Haggai 2, 1 through 9, um, you, were, you were speaking about how things have changed, and so you were, you were, you were appreciating the past of what God had done, has done here, um, but also pointing forward to what God is doing. And, and, and as I was thinking about this conversation, we, we, what, what we have lacked in the past is a decisiveness to do this together and the hard work of saying man you're better at that than i am can we walk together um even even if i don't have authority over you right like and so often that's how we approach things it's like oh and and <laughs> and rob talked about me kind of rebuffing his offer which it was just no this is kind of where God has called me in this season, but I've, I've grabbed hands with you, and I, I see what God is doing in you and through you. I see your heart. We've had conversations. We've talked together. We've prayed together. And so I want to join what God has called me to do with what God has called you to do and pray and figure out how we can do it together to serve the people that aren't being served, to reach the folks who aren't being reached. And, and that's the spirit of unity, I think, that is really true in Scripture, right? Um, God took, Jesus took a bunch of folks who were really different, but he called them to the same mission. And, and he, he started to build his kingdom and his church in and through those people, although their ministries would look vastly different. Um, but they were called to oneness. And so, you know, it's a fight. Uh, if, if let's just, I, I think, acknowledging what is, um, taking uh, different uh, uh, geographical differences, different racial differences, and coming together and saying, we believe God is called to do this. How do we do this well in a community and in a society that does not always appreciate the diversity? And so what I applaud as well is that Huffman Baptist Church and the uh, leadership here, Pastor Rob, Pastor Bill, and the other leadership here, are willing to do the hard work of figuring that out, right? And that, and that we've committed to equality of voices in that work because we're united in the mission. He mentioned equality of voices. <clears throat> so what we have done, we have three full-time pastoral staff members here, myself, Bill Sears, and Richard. And we are executive leadership, but we have brought these guys on as equal voices in an executive leadership team so that as we begin figuring out what ministry at 700 Huffman Road looks like in the future, we're figuring that out together. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And I, I appreciate their willingness to be a part of that. Um, appreciate the willingness of the church to embrace this. Um, I've shared this story with countless people over the last months, and they're scratching their heads, and they're going, nobody's doing that. And I'm like, yeah, I know, it's kind of cool, <laughs> kind of interesting. Talk to me again in two years, and we'll talk, and we'll see. <laughs> you know, ultimately, I think, as Danny said, there are the differences, but the outcome is the same. What we all want is the same. Everyone up here, everyone out there, everybody wants the same. We may be doing it in a different way or call something different, but when I, when I looked at it and I thought about it, you know, I, and, you know, the Holy Spirit does it with me so differently, and I thought about the church itself. 
I don't care what building you guys have, about five, six, or 16, I don't know how many buildings are. <laughs> I, I get lost every time I come. But uh, every building that you have has four walls, yeah. okay? And the four walls, even of this edifice here, there are four walls, and you have four partners sitting right here. Elevate is about elevation of young people. Young Life is about transformation of young people. Banks Academy is about the education of young people. You guys are about the salvation of young people. And this oh, woman can preach. <laughs> but in the final, but in the final analysis, it's all about the edification mm. of Jesus Christ. Say that again. <laughs> Say this. I left here the other day, Friday, I think it was. I think we were here. Uh, we do have two of our board members I do want to acknowledge that's here. Um, our president of our board, who's the founder of Banks Academy, by the way, and Brad Boy. If you guys are holding hands up, thank you guys for coming and being so I don't know if you guys know this. I'm not from Birmingham. This is my first year at Banks Academy. Never heard of the place in my life. That man held a gun to my head and said, you get no, I was kidding. Uh, <laughs> Never heard of it before, but I came here, so I, I, have a, I have a master. First of all, I'm directionally challenged, okay? So I left here Friday, and my husband and I went, went some, some, some places. He was in his vehicle, and I was in mine. So I started back like I knew where I was going. Well, I'm directionally challenged. I thought, well, I was thinking that I was on the right road, this Hoffman Road. I didn't see a sign. So I'm driving, I'm trying to figure, well, if I'm on Huffman Road, I should pass by the school, our new school. Then I thought, you know what? All you have to do is look for the cross. Mm. So I started driving, and I'm looking at all these things around, and I saw the cross. And that's what we're trying to do with these young people. Bring them to the cross. No matter what organization they're part of, every day they come here, they're gonna be sitting at the foot of the cross. Amen. And in the song that was sung today, <laughs> Saved by the Cross, I mean, I have a right to but that's what we want, to bring them to the cross. And that's what it's about. So, go ahead. Yeah, so I was just going to talk about and said, I'd I love to hear your philosophy on this because you helped me so much. So in this work that we're doing, especially working with students in school, um, what we need is a place that they feel safe to come and just be. Right? Like everybody needs a place where you can just come and just hang out, chill, let your guard down, and feel like you're safe in that area, that nobody is going to mess with you or press any of your buttons, um, and that you can sit on the couch and watch a good TV show, watch a game, and that could be your time during that time. Um, and so what we, what we prayed a lot about, especially in, in, in urban ministry, you need places where folks feel like they can go and be safe. And you also need places where you can go and you can ex have different experiences with, with one another. Um, and so Cedric, I'd love for you to talk about just your philosophy on this because you've helped me so much in thinking about giving people that space where they can just be. Sounds like you were describing my office. That is <laughs> the heartbeat behind my office. It is a teenager hangout. It is set up like that on purpose with their pictures on the wall. They were like, hey, well, where's my picture coming up there? Because it feels like home. Um, that's the heartbeat behind it. So when I show up, and it's, it's easy to partner with Banks Academy because that means I like to go where, where kids are. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, it feels really weird now I'm at a church. I never thought I would see this day because I always went to where they are. Because now it's like I'm not even asking you to change. Just be yourself and I'm coming to you where you are. And so the whole goal has been to create safety for them. And so we go into the schools like, yeah, what's, what's going on? Let's talk. And so now Danny and I are partnering this way where um, I get to meet with his staff. You didn't mention this earlier, but our newest school we're starting is Huffman High School in Young Life World. Because, because since, since I'm pouring into them, they're in the school, the kids get to come to our office. But on top of that, we're going to actually launch a Young Life Club in the fall at Huffman High School through the partnership with Elevate. And so I'm able to take our volunteers and say, okay, now we're about to go start a new site right here. What are we going to change? Nothing. Because the goal in itself is to go where kids are. We're going to introduce adolescents to Jesus Christ and help them grow in their faith. It doesn't change. 
um, one of Danny's staff members was one of my volunteers. He was looking for a staff person. I said, I'll give, I, I, I know one. Well, how would that work? It, it won't be called Young Life anymore. I said, does it have Jesus' name to it? <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't matter whose name is tied to it. I just want to know that my Savior's name is tied to it, and we're good to go. I've known Danny for 12 years, and it, it doesn't really matter about the name. I said, I trust Danny. We'll be fine. And so since this partnership has taken place, I'm like, oh, yeah, we're, we're starting Huffman High School. Danny's asking, when are we going to start? We know him. We're going to get Huffman going first, and we're going to get that one going. And, and then as we keep growing, because I don't want to just grow really fast. I want to make sure that the kids have some depth to them that when they walk around, when they can mention the name of Jesus, they say, oh, I, I met him. I talked to him earlier this morning. I, I want this true picture that, that the word of God became flesh and dwell among them. That there's not this, I'm trying to do it. Oh, I know it because I sat with him this morning. I had somebody else sit with me and teach me about what it looks like to walk with Jesus. That's, that's the heartbeat that we bring to the table. And that's where we want to continue to grow. And so we meet together with his staff. Um, I look forward to seeing how we're going to do the same in Banks. I say, there's no way I can't start uh, Young Life in Banks Academy because we're, we're in the same building. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I'm going to struggle to get to my office without stopping by Banks. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to work on having some boundaries and, and not hang out with teenagers all day. Y'all pray for me. Uh, Y'all no. pray for me. Serious about y'all <laughs> In the old church, stretch your hands. So we're going to pray for Cedric. We'll put him on the prayer list. So fill out that QR code that uh, Pastor Rob mentioned earlier and put Cedric on the prayer list. I, mean, I get excited <laughs> to see teenagers. It doesn't matter where they are in their journey because I know my Lord and I know that he will touch them. They're like, are, are you going to cover the scripture? I said, I, I will walk with the scripture and the scripture will come out when it needs to come out. It's like, oh, are you serious? I'm not playing. Um, I don't want to forget my man I see in the back, Caleb Maxey. Um, and because he is an integral part of this too, because um, through our partnership, we had the event on Wednesday, and he was the speaker. I, I couldn't imagine doing it any other way. I'll bring some kids, Danny brought some kids, Banks Academy brought some kids, and I said, we know who we want to speak. This man's from this area. I'm like, well, here we go. And when all the kids came up for the altar call, I was trying to think, how do I get them all in a small group? How do we get this group? How do I get this group? <laughs> and we all got different roles, but it's for the same purpose. That man is an evangelist, and I said, well, I have no doubt about it. They will get saved. Now, who's going to disciple them? Let's get busy. Now, let's, here we go. Here. That's how my brain was working during the whole process. So I see you back there, my man. Um, thank you for what you bring to the table. You know, one, one of the things as we get ready to wrap up, we're all essentially committed to the task of making disciples, all, all four of us. And um, it's, going to be, it's going to be exciting to see how God uses this in the days to come. Church guests, former members, give them a round of applause. While they are making their way uh, to their seats, we'll ask the worship team to go on and make your way up here. The rest of you can be seated for just a moment. In the opening prayer, you heard me say, Lord, show us how we who are gathered here today can possibly be a part of what you are doing and what you will be doing. I'm going to ask you to consider three things. Number one, I'm going to ask you to pray for us, to make a commitment to pray for us. I've asked our church members to pray every morning at 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock for 700 Huffman Road. And I'm going to ask you to pray three specific things. Pray that we as a church would stay unified around the mission of making Jesus known, that we don't get distracted, but we stay laser focused on the mission of making Jesus known. Number two. I'm going to ask that you pray for workers who would go into the harvest. And number three, I'm going to ask you to pray for the harvest. Now, you can do that 
without any other information, just pray those three things. But if you would like to know what's going on so that you can kind of fine-tune your prayers a little bit here and there, we would love to add you to our newsletter email list. And so in your bulletin that you picked up, I hope you did, uh, you can go to HuffmanBaptist.org. There's a it tells you that, HuffmanBaptist.org slash homecoming22. And there's a place for you there to give us your information so that all we're asking for is, I think, name and email address. And we'll email you, if you're not already receiving it, our monthly newsletter. You can also join a Facebook group called Friends of Huffman Baptist Church. Many of you are already members of that. But if you're not asked to join that group, you'll be able to keep up with what's going on. So I'm asking you to make a commitment to pray for us. Number two, I'm asking you to make a commitment to give. It wouldn't be church if I didn't do that, right? <laughs> now, I'm not asking you to stop giving where you're going to church, but I'm asking you to consider helping to fund the ministries that we are doing. I'm not asking you to help pay the light bills or to pay for the air conditioner, unless you want to. Uh, but I'm asking you to help support the ministries. We have a fund called Acts 1-8. It is our local version of Lottie and Annie. A hundred percent of what is given to Acts 1-8 is used for community engagement, evangelism, outreach, the kinds of things we've been talking about. If you want to give today, just write on your check, write on your envelope, Acts 1-8. It'll go directly there. Church members, you give like you always give, okay? Don't, don't change up. You give like you always give. But for those of you who are just here for the day, if you would consider doing that, if you're not prepared to do it today, you can go again to HuffmanBaptist.org slash Homecoming22, and there's a link for you to be able to give online. Number three, and this won't apply to all of you, but some of you may be thinking, man, I'd kind of like to be a part of what I see going on here. This, this is exciting. And it may not be that you're going to move your membership back to Huffman. I'm not asking you to do that. Only the Lord can lead you to do those things. But I am asking you to pray about, consider, would God lead you to come alongside us for a season? We don't know what a season is. God defines a season. But specifically to help in a couple of areas, preschool children's ministry, hospitality, welcoming team, if any of you have tech skills, we're always in need of tech skills. But if you would consider, just pray about, Lord, maybe for three months, six months, a year, I don't know. Would you consider those three things? Pray for us, give, and serve. Now, I'm going to ask for those of you who are able, let's go ahead and stand. Worship team is going to lead us in just a moment of our closing song. But while they are, as they get ready to start the closing song, if you would make one of those three commitments and you are able, would you make your way to the altar? I'm not going to ask you to come and, and bow at the altar because if you do, we're just going to have people bowing and lying all over the floor. That won't work. But if you're able and you're willing to make one of those three commitments, would you make your way to the altar? If not, where you are, just stand there with your hand raised. I'm making that commitment to the Lord.